There are 40 Brawler mutations coming to Brawl Stars and they are game breaking. Since they're only temporary, I wanted to make a Mutation Olympics as soon as possible. Let's start off with the race test. El Primo's mutation makes him spend way less time in the air while he uses his super, but he still has the same range, so it's not much faster. After he hits the ground, he gets two speed buffs, one from his hypercharge and the other from his star power. He finishes in 6.4 seconds and places fourth out of the four brawlers. Next, we have Stu and his mutation just keeps his supercharge at all times. And even though infinite healing is cool, zero drag star power is definitely the way to go for this test. Dashing over and over again doesn't even give him time to move normally, so he dashes all the way to the finish line in 4.7 seconds and gets third. Coming in second place is Carl and his mutation and was one of the most fun in the game just because of how insane he's able to move with his super. It's so fast that he finishes the entire race test and then some before his super ends, so he doesn't even need his flying hook gadget. He finishes in 2.7 seconds and gets second place. But first place goes to Gray, which allows him to have three portals on the map. Yeah, I kind of let him cheat by using three supers, but I mean, he can almost instantly teleport across the map after he teleports three times. And after teleporting three times, he uses a fourth super to teleport across the finish line. It only takes him 1.7 seconds, which easily puts him first in the race test. Next, we have the boss test or how quickly brawlers are able to take out the boss. Sprout's mutation allows it throw to throw two projectiles one after the other. Unfortunately, Sprout's hypercharge can't deal any damage to the boss because it just pushes him away, but it still defeats the boss twice as fast as normal. That's 50.2 seconds, so it gets 15 out of 15 brawlers in this test. Next is Max, and Max gets unlimited ammo while mutated, but she also gets instant reload super. Because of that, her unload speed remains the same, but with some extra damage from two hypercharges, Max is able to defeat the boss in 18.9 seconds, and she ends up getting 14th place. Yes, we are allowing hypercharges for this video, even though not every brawler has one. Next, we have Pam. She has the exact same mutation as Max, but each of Pam's shots take way longer to unload. However, they also deal more damage and she gets help from her super. Coincidentally, Pam's able to defeat the boss in 18.7 seconds, which is only two tenths of a second faster than Max and is enough to give her 13th place. Next is Lola's mutation, which gives her two egos with each super. So to make things easier, I just cornered the two of them and stacked them on top of each other. In order to maximize damage, there has to be some distance between Lola and her egos as possible while still being able to hit the boss with every projectile. With some extra damage from her star power, Lola defeats the boss in 18.6 seconds and just barely gets 12. Next is Penny and I let Penny cheat a little bit in this test just to show how strong her mutation can be and I let her use the pet damage gear since she gets two mortars. She also places her barrel right in front of the boss in order to deal huge splash damage with each of her attacks. She defeats the boss in 18.5 seconds and just squeezes 11th place. Next we have Ash and he spawns a ton of rats with a super instead of just five. So not only do they deal more damage but they instantly recharge his super to fill up Ash's rage bar and he just keeps chaining supers and hitting the boss with his attack in between. The defeats the boss in 18.2 seconds and gets 10th. Up next we have Melody and she gets two additional slots for music notes with her mutation so she can have five music notes going at once. She still has to hit the boss with five separate ammo which does take a few seconds but once she has five going it does not take much longer to take off the boss by moving around it counterclockwise. She defeats the boss in 16.2 seconds and gets ninth place. Next is Angelo and Angelo's mutation adds two more projectiles to each of his shots. Since each of these arrows deal the same amount of damage as the original it only takes a few fully charged super shots at point blank range to take out the boss since he also takes damage from the super itself. He takes out the boss in 15.3 seconds and gets 8th place. For Meg's mutation, she gets additional projectiles for each of her original projectiles, which is already a lot. She easily charges her super with only one ammo, so she switches back and forth between using her super and firing regular attacks. She clears the boss in 14.8 seconds, which gets her 7th place. Next, we have Brock's mutation, which gives him an extra rocket right alongside each rocket he fires with his main attack. So even though his attacks deal double the damage, he still doesn't have enough time to fire them since he's always chaining his super so fast. And his new hypercharge makes things a little bit easier than before as well. He defeats the boss in 14.6 seconds and gets 6th place. Then normally Piper uses her super as often as she can in this test, but her mutation adds an additional projectile with each shot, and that also adds to her reload speed thanks to her snappy sniping star power. Not only does this deal twice the damage, but it's also almost like she has unlimited ammo. She defeats the boss in 14.1 seconds and gets fifth place. Up next is Nita and her mutation spawns two bears with her super instead of one and both of them are affected by her hyper bear star power. Her new hyper charge surprisingly doesn't add any power to her bears but it does give herself some extra damage but still not even 
close to damage output from two hyper bears. She clears the boss in 12.1 seconds and gets fourth place. Up next is Shelly and she fires her exact same main attack twice, one after the other with her mutation. This also means she doubles her supercharge with each attack so she can easily chain her super over and over again. She defeats the boss in 11.7 seconds, which puts her in third place. Up next is Spike and his needles are doubled with each of his main attacks so they deal significantly more damage at the very close range. His gadget still does the most damage by far, but with his attack and super, he doesn't even finish using a second gadget by the time the boss is destroyed. He defeats the boss in 7.7 .7 seconds and gets second place. But first place surprisingly goes to Tick. When Tick uses his super, his mutation spawns two extra Tick heads next to the original, which makes a total of three. Each of these heads is affected by his new hypercharge, so one super will drop 18 mines that each deal 4,000 damage. Not all of them hit the boss, but far more than enough do to take the boss out in just a few seconds. Tick defeats the boss in 5.4 seconds and gets first place overall. Up next, we have the swarm test with two competitors, starting with Squeak. When Squeak uses his super, his mutation makes each bomb the size of the bombs that he throws with his regular attacks. Even though the bombs stay in a tight place, they still cover three whole rows of bots, and by the time they explode, Squeak easily gets two more to take out the last two rows about the same time. He defeats the swarm in 2.3 seconds and gets second out of these two brawlers. But number one is Grom, and Grom's mutation adds four more bombs to his super that each travel in a diagonal direction. So all Grom has to do is throw one super in the middle and all of the bots are destroyed. It takes Grom 1.5 seconds to defeat the swarm, so he gets first place. Up next is the damage test, starting with Crow. I would have put Crow in the boss test if his super wasn't so good at taking out the boss. I figured it'd be more helpful just to show how much damage his mutation adds to his main attack. He deals double his regular damage since his mutation makes his daggers come back to him, just like Carl's main attack. And the poison only lasts an extra second, so Crow is able to deal 4,640 damage with one attack. That puts him in seventh place. Next, we have B, and B's mutation sends one single B like the other ones from her rattled hive gadget out every time she fires her main attack. These will deal a lot of extra damage over time, but for only one attack, they only add about 800 damage. Since B can deal 4,000 damage with the charge shot, she deals 4,800 damage and gets sixth place. Next is Gale, and Gale's main attack gains three more snowballs on each side of his mutation to make a total of 12 snowballs. The attack is so wide that you'll never deal all of his damage to the same target, but it still has the potential to deal 6,720 damage in total. So, Gale ties with the next brawler for fourth place, and that brawler is Bonnie. Bonnie's mutation only adds to her cannon form, but it adds two more projectiles to her main attack that each shoot out diagonally. At point blank, all three projectiles will hit the same target, and since each of them deal 2,240 damage, that makes a total of 6,720 damage with a single attack, and she ties with Gale for fourth. Coming in third, we have Mandy. Her mutation is similar to Bonnie's, except instead of two extra attack projectiles, it's two extra super projectiles. She already has one of the strongest supers in the game, and at point blank, she can deal triple the damage of one. She deals 15,000 damage with her mutation and gets third place. Next, we have Belle, and her mutation makes her main attack split into five beams that will each create their own electricity and will bounce between enemies up to three times. So, her main attack deals damage and then bounces and splits into five new beams that also deal damage with each bounce around. So technically, with one attack in the perfect situation, Belle has the potential to deal 8,850 damage, and that's enough for second place. But coming in first is Janet. When Janet uses her super, her mutation allows her to drop bombs at double the speed, which means that she drops double the amount of bombs. And for some reason, the first bomb she drops deals double damage. In total, she can deal 20,800 damage with just one super. That puts her in first place. Up next is the range test. Starting off with Buzz, and his super becomes way longer with his mutation active. Its reticle literally goes off the screen, and you can just take a tiny step forward from where you spawn in the training cave and still be able to reach the first row of bots at the top. I measured this out to be about 22 tiles, so Buzz gets third place out of the three brawlers in this test. Coming in second place is Rico. Now, for the next two brawlers, there's literally not enough room in the training cave, and I could not use mutations in custom maps, so I just had to time how long it takes their shots to stop bouncing back and forth. His main attack bounces for around 7.2 seconds, and his super keeps bouncing for six seconds, but I still think his super has 
has way more range because of how fast the projectiles are moving. As of right now, I don't have a super accurate way of measuring these, so I won't rank Rico or the next brawler, but it's pretty clear that they have more range than Buzz. But taking first is Ruffs' mutation. It not only increases the attack range after projectile bounce, but it also adds a third projectile along the first two. His shot continues to bounce for 10.1 seconds, which is significantly longer than Rico's main attack. And honestly, it, it could be kind of close with the super, I don't know, but his, his it's insane. The projectile literally bounces for just over 10 seconds. How crazy is that? Up next, we have the wall break test. And Frank is able to break down walls with his main attack while he's mutated. So it's pretty hard to test because there aren't very many walls in the training area and they are all very thin. That being said, the most tiles I was able to break through with one attack was four. I'm not totally sure if I can break through more if there are more walls stack up together. But for now, he scores four tiles and gets second place out of two brawlers. And first place is Colt. And Colt's mutation is the same exact as Frank but his test was a lot more accurate, I think, just because of the attack is fired in a thin straight line, right? With one attack, Colt is able to break through six tiles and gets first place. That's one tile for each of his projectiles. Up next, we have a brand new test called the Amber Test. <laughs> I don't know how to rank these, but for every piece of damage that Hank takes with his mutation, he fires off a super. And with Amber attacking him, he just explodes fist torpedoes out like crazy. I wish I could have tested this against the high safe, but there's no way for me to do that. It's just insane. Can you imagine all the damage? I mean, that would just wreck a high safe instantly. Up next, we have Eve, and I wish I could show a good like example of this, but with every piece of damage that Eve takes, she spawns two little hatchlings. Against Amber, Amber just melts through them, so you don't really know but they keep on spawning and you see all the damage numbers pop up that's kind of cool right but next we have poco and poco procs heals over time for every piece of damage that he takes and against amber you just i mean this healing is absolutely insane it's not quite enough to bring him all the way back up to full hp but when paired with his natural healing it absolutely would be this is just crazy up next we have the upgrade to max level test <laughs> surge is the only one in this so he wins his mutation allows him to upgrade with just one super and so he he gets first. Congratulations, Surge. Next, we also have the bush test. Once again, Rose is the winner here because no other brawler can spawn a bunch of bushes, but look just how many bushes she is able to spawn. It's quite a bit more than her grow light gadget, which is really uh, like just crazy cool. Next is the mine test, and Bo is able to place as many mines as he wants on the battlefield, which makes him significantly more than like Belle with her gadget. She can only place three, right? So congratulations to Bo. You get first place. Next is the close test and Leon's mutation summons two clones of himself whenever you, he uses his super. He can also use his gadget to spawn a third clone. So with three clones on the battlefield at once, that is an easy first place for Leon. And there you have the mutation Olympics. Obviously not each mutation is the, is equally strong as the other. And a lot of them are more useful in different situations. But you guys asked the mutation Olympics and so there you go. Drop a comment letting me know if there are any other videos you'd like to see. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by. We will see you in the next Brawl Stars video. Use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. K-A-I-R-O-S. Code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. More OP than mutations.